Hi, boys and girls, and a happy Sabbath day. Oh, and a happy new year. This is the first day of the new year. Do you know what year it is? It's 2022. Yeah, it's been over 2,000 years since Jesus was here. Yeah, and he's coming again. You know that, right? Do you know what this is? This long thing? It's a cane. Yeah, it helps people to walk. You know whose it is? It's mine. <laughs> you know why? Because I got a new knee. Yeah, just a couple weeks ago, I got a brand new knee. Yeah, the doctors cut it open. They took the old knee out and they put a new one in. And now, guess what's happening? God is healing it. Yeah, God is healing it. Isn't it wonderful what God can do to heal us and make us better? You know, as I start this new year, I get to start with a brand new knee right here. I have to use the cane for a while, but I got a brand new knee. It was hurting before, you know, and it's a little sore right now, but it's going to get better. You know how I know that? Because God promises that to his people. In the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, God makes a promise to his people. You know who his people are? His people are people like you who love Jesus and obey him and people like me who also love Jesus and obey his commandments. And listen to what he tells us, his people. In Jeremiah, he says, But I will heal your wounds. My wound right here, my knee. I will heal your wounds and restore your health. Yeah, he's going to make us well. If you've ever been hurt, God helped you to get well when we turn it over to him. So we need to pray that God will help us when we get hurt. And as we start this new year, that we will place ourselves in his hands so that he'll take care of us and he'll heal us just like he tells us whenever we get hurt. You know, kids are always getting hurt doing something, playing or doing something around the house. And sometimes we just get hurt. And it's a sad thing, but Jesus takes care of us. Father, I just thank you so much for the way you take care of us. You, you heal our wounds when we're cut or whatever. It just heals and it's just so magical. And you give us health. You give us our good health. And I thank you for that. And I pray that you will keep us healthy in this new year. And always in Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year and welcome to True Life Community, Seventh-day Adventist Church on this beautiful Sabbath morning. We just thank you for joining us today. I want to uh, thank the children for uh, uh, tuning into the children's story. We hope you enjoyed that. And today uh, we have Tammy Romero starting our worship service with this song called Jesus Will Still Be There. Tammy, thank you so much. Storms rise, hopes fade, 
And you place your bets on another day When the going gets tough, when the ride's too rough When you're just not sure enough Jesus will still be will still be there when no one else is true he'll still be loving you when it looks like you've lost it all and you haven't got a prayer Jesus will still Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, very um, popular and famous text from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, where it says, I already know the plans I have for you. I will help you, not hurt you. I will give you a future and a hope. What a, an amazing promise from our Lord. And, and uh, I just want to begin this new year on this Sabbath day, New Year's Day, with a, uh, with a reading like that that gives us hope and a promise. Let's begin with the word of prayer, shall we? Father, we just thank you so much for the words that are so encouraging in your Bible, the, the, the book that you've given us as a gift. I pray that you will help us this coming year to, uh, to make the Bible a real part of our everyday lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I titled the sermon today, Living Wisely in 22. That is 2022. 
I'm sure you have noticed that each year around New Year's time, major magazines put out an issue with pictorial sections recalling people and events that have happened over the past year. It was Edith Lovejoy Pierce who said, we will open a book, its pages are blank. We are going to put words on them ourselves. The book is called Opportunity and its first chapter is New Year's Day. <laughs> it's not often that we have the beginning of a new year on the Sabbath day, but 2022 is one of those years. Another quote by Carl Bard is one of, one of my favorites. I, I like this quote because I know that I have messed up quite a few times, just as all of us have over the past year. Carl Bard reminds us with these words, although no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Many magazine articles also include uh, notes by experts predicting what they expect, what they expect to happen in the years ahead. Some make predictions covering 10, 20, even more years ahead. <laughs> and in the past, a few of these predictions have, have really come close to hitting the mark. Some of them have hit the mark exactly, while others couldn't have been more wrong. For example, back in 1967, Experts predicted that by the turn of the century, by the year 2000, technology would have taken over so much of our work that the average American work week would only be 22 hours long and that we would work only 27 weeks out of the year. As a result, one of our biggest problems then would be how to handle all of that leisure time. Now, I don't know about you, but that prediction certainly missed its mark for my wife and I. I mean, we are busier than ever. Uh, and, and every year, even with the technology improvements and increases, our work seems to, 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 to get worse, to get heavier, to get, uh, to, to get larger. <laughs> uh, when we are finished eating our fast food, <laughs> we, so, we're, in so, we're, in so big, we're in so big a hurry that we that we uh, work fast we 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 walk fast we talk fast and when we get through with that fast food we we often stand up and say you know i i really have to run i really have to too many things to do so here we are the very first day of a new year and i wonder how our lives will change or remain the same in the year 2022 will we be as busy Will we make any better use of our time? In 364 and one fourth days, when this year is over, will we be looking back with joy at all the successes that we've had? Or will we regret all of our failures? It's important for us to consider that question as time goes by, as the years go by because there are things we can do about it. There are lots of passages in the Bible that help us uh, look forward to the rest of 2022 if we read and apply these counsels and these, these suggestions uh, carefully. Way back there in Proverbs chapter 22, Solomon, who was a king, said this about us and kings. He said in Proverbs 22, verse 11, in the clear word Bible, he who loves a pure heart and whose speech is gracious will have even the king as his friend. <laughs> Solomon probably had many men who spoke to him with flattery to buy influence for themselves from this great king. But Solomon tells us the kind of people that he enjoyed to have around him. It was those whose hearts were clear and true and honest and innocent. Plus the words they spoke were kind and they were merciful and they were compassionate. 
it gives us a hint as we as we go on as to how we stand before the king of all kings in 2022 and onward. The same idea carries us into the New Testament when Paul speaks to the Ephesian church. The passage is found in Ephesians chapter five when Paul speaks to the people in Ephesus. He says, remember in a few verses of, uh, well, actually in the first few verses of chapter five, Paul speaks rather frankly, speaks rather frankly to these Ephesian people about their conduct. <laughs> Listen to his language. He says, such things as illicit sex, lewd living, and greed have absolutely no place in a Christian's life. These things are totally unbecoming to a people who are bound for heaven. Also, filthy language, listen, flippant talk, coarse joking, and making fun of people should have no place in our lives. What you should talk about is how grateful you are for what God and others have done for you. Ephesians chapter five, verses three and four, that's taken from the Clear Word Bible. Most of my texts today are from the Clear Word Bible. I've fall, fallen in love with that Bible, as I've told you before. So Paul goes so far as to give these people of Ephesus examples of the sins that he's talking about in their lives. And he goes farther in Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse 15. He says, be, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Use your wisdom. The question arises then, if I'm living my life unwisely, how can I start living wisely? If I am an unwise person, will I recognize that I'm unwise? that I need to be wise. He says, making the most of every, every opportunity. This is, this is Paul giving us the answer. He says, Paul was a wise person, you know, and he knew how to answer that question. How can I become wise? He goes on in this section of scripture to help us find out how we can live wisely. Listen, he says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is, Ephesians 5, 16. So the apostle Paul presents here some very <clears throat> important lessons for you and me to consider. First of all, he says, the days in which we live, and that was way back in Paul's time, the days in which we live are evil. There's evil all around us. First of all, we must be very careful how we live since our lives are being lived in an evil environment, in an evil world. When our surroundings are evil, Paul says to live wisely. How do I live wisely in an unwise world? In most cases, it means I go against the mainstream, I go against the grain of almost everyone's thinking and acting in the world around me, especially today. So in Ephesians 5, Paul says, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. It's rather easy to conclude that living wisely must be to understand what the Lord's will is. He's pounding that home, you see. Oh, so what is the Lord's will? And how can I find it? Where, where is that found? Well, I think we all know where it's found. There are dozens, dozens, and probably even hundreds of Bible verses that answer that question. Listen to a few of them and see if they, if they make you comfortable or a little bit uncomfortable. Look at Romans chapter 12, and Paul is, is writing here. Don't pattern your life after this world, but let God transform you from the inside out and give you a new way of thinking. Then you will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is not. Romans 12, verse two, Good News Bible. It's plain, it's plain to me 
that the source for understanding what the will of God is for my life is in the book that God gave us for wise living. It's simple. It's the word, the Bible. One of the best resolutions that we can make this year is to spend more time in God's word where we learn how to live wisely for 2022. J.P. Morgan said, the first step toward getting somewhere is to, is to decide you're not going to stay where you are. <laughs> then back to Paul again in Colossians chapter four, he says, continue earnestly in prayer and stay spiritually alert, always being grateful, grateful for what the Lord has done for you. Pray for us that God will give us opportunities to tell people the good news about Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray, pray for the evangelists. Pray for those who are sharing the faith. Be tactful. Now, this is us contacting people personally. Be tactful as you share your faith with unbelievers when opportunities arise. Always be pleasant and courteous. Speak kindly to everyone and know what you believe so you can give the right answers when people ask you questions. Colossians 4 verses two through six. And Matthew says this, that's why you should make things right with others before you go to worship God. And if while you are worshiping, you remember that you have something to make right, it's better for you to leave, go and make things right and come back later. A few years ago, People Magazine published an article called Dead Ahead. This article talked about a clock that keeps track of how much time you have left to live. It calculates an average lifespan of 75 years for men and 80 years for women. So you program your sex and your age into the clock and from then on it tells you how much time you have left. It's sold for $99.95. I didn't buy one. <laughs> I don't want to know how much time I have left. And I don't know very many people who want to know how much time they have left. It's an intriguing device. And if, if I lived to be 85 years old, I have about 3,665 days left. <laughs> and I need to make use of those days. But I could be hit by a mad parishioner, you know, out here in a parking lot today, and my life is over. <laughs> So the question comes to my mind, how much time do we have to accomplish all these great things before our life on earth ends or Jesus comes again? The answer is we have today. We have today and today is when we begin. I recall a song by Christy Lane in 1979, a very popular song in that year and years to come, it's still popular. Um, it was called One Day at a Time. These words are part of that song, and these words are true. It says, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way one day at a time. What is it that we need the strength to accomplish today? The Bible helps to fill in those blanks. Listen to Paul once again in Romans 12. Be kind and courteous to one another as true brothers and sisters. In the family of Christ, honoring each other above ourselves. Don't be lazy. Do your work enthusiastically, just as if you were working for the Lord himself. Romans 12, verses 10 and 11. The Bible reinforces the idea that we should not count on tomorrow because tomorrow may not come to you and me. All we have is right now. So our time on earth is valuable because it is limited. There, there will be a day 
when our life ends, unless Jesus comes. <laughs> Jesus told us that Satan is a robber and a thief. He's a killer, murderer. And the one thing he tries to steal from us is our time. Because time is one of our most valuable possessions. Think of the time wasted doing things that do not bring glory to God, the Heavenly Father. Think of the time as well as the money spent in, uh, say, gambling or drinking or lost in drugs. Think of the shallow relationships we develop and the time we waste in gossiping or slandering or spreading rumors. Think of the time we waste on our guilt trips after we have asked God to forgive us of our past sins. Think about the time we spend worrying about things that we have prayed for. I wonder how God feels about that. Huh. Isn't prayer supposed to is it prayer supposed to take the worry away? If prayer does not take the worry away, whose problem is it? <laughs> My wife has this little plaque on the kitchen island at, at our home, and she looks at it every day, and it says, pray more, worry less. <laughs> what a slogan. Satan has many ways to rob time from us. Did you know that time can be wasted doing things that are not bad? <laughs> but, but maybe not the best things to do at the time. Listen to the story from Luke. Jesus went to Bethany to Martha's house. Martha had a sister named Mary who enjoyed sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to what he had to say. Luke 10, the story's found in Luke 10. Have you ever had someone at your house as a guest? And you were maybe in the kitchen or maybe out at the grill preparing food and everyone's inside and they're laughing at the stories that the guest is saying and, and you're wondering, uh, I wish I was in there and you might even step inside. Could you just hold off a little bit? Because I want to hear these stories too. The Bible continues the story of Martha and Mary. On this occasion, Martha was extremely rushed, trying to get food together for all the hungry men. You see, Martha was not doing anything particularly wrong or sinful. <laughs> she certainly wasn't sinning, but she was not doing the best thing that she could have been doing at the moment. I mean, Jesus was in her house. God was in Martha's house. The savior of the world was in her house. Folks, with the right preparation and with the correct invitation, at any of our gatherings at our homes, Jesus is in the house. Jesus wants to be in our house. He wants to be a part of your gathering, of our gatherings. The story in Luke continues. She, that is Martha, finally went to Jesus to complain. Now it's interesting that she goes to the guests to complain. The, the supreme guest, she complains to him rather than someone else in the in the group. She went to Jesus to complain about her sister who just sat there listening. Martha said, Lord, don't you care anything about how much work it takes to feed all of you? The least you can do is tell my sister to help me. <laughs> Luke 10 verse 40. Do you understand that Jesus, Jesus was already feeding the people in Martha's house. Jesus was already feeding everyone. And poor Martha was missing the meal. So Jesus responds to Martha by saying, Martha, 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 you are helpful to everyone in need 
and you're going to great lengths to feed us and make us comfortable. Listen carefully. But there are more important things than food and comfort. <laughs> Boy, when I'm hungry or when I'm cold, I can't think of anything more important than food and warmth and comfort. But Jesus says there's more important things. He says, Mary came to me because she recognizes her need. She has chosen the right thing. What I'm telling her will help her for the rest of her life. Now, was Martha sinning by fixing the meal in the kitchen? No, of course not. But here is the problem. She was so preoccupied, preoccupied with what she was doing that she didn't realize that God was in her living room. And at that, and it, it, it just seems the same with us. We can allow ourselves to get so caught up in earthly things that we don't think, we don't think about taking the time to deal with the things of eternal importance, the things that will last forever and ever. Today is the first day of a brand new year. We begin our book with the blank pages ahead of us. We will put the words on those pages ourselves. The book is called Opportunity. New Year's Day, today is the first chapter. May your book be filled with all the wisest choices that you and God can make together that is my prayer for each of us in the coming year, 2022. Dick Lewis will now close our worship service today with this wonderful song. I love this song, One Pair of Hands. Dick. One pair of hands for mountains one pair of hands form the sea one pair of hands made the sun and the moon every bird every flower every tree one pair of hands form the valley the rivers, the oceans, and the sand. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. One pair of hands heal the sick. One pair of hands raise the dead One pair of hands calm the raging storm And thousands of people were fed One pair of hands said I love you And those hands were nailed to a tree those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. Yes, those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. Put your faith into one pair of hands. One pair of hands. Thank you, Dick, for closing our worship service today with the beautiful song one pair of hands Jesus has these wonderful hands that he holds the world together and he uses those hands to bring
to bring peace and joy and comfort to your life. I just pray that this new year, 2022, will be the greatest year of your life in your relationship with, to Jesus. Spend time in his word. Spend time in prayer, shall we? Let's close with prayer now. Father, as we bow in your presence, it's so important for us to, to realize that we have an open book before us, and the book is our life, our own opportunities. And today is the first page on that book. I pray that you will help us to begin filling it with wonderful things that will last all year long and throughout the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.